Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Thank you so much for being here. Today, I want to talk to you about something that is really interesting to me. A couple of weeks ago, I was walking with a couple of friends who had just seen a Broadway show, and we passed, I met them for dinner. We passed a woman who was sitting in one of those, it, it sort of a, can do the job of both being a little seat and a walker, and we passed her. And as I passed her, I noticed she was kind of looking down. So I stopped and I asked her if she was okay. And she looked up at me and she said, yeah, I'm fine. And I said, okay, I was just checking. And she stopped me and she said, just out of curiosity, what made you care enough to ask? And that took me aback a minute. I thought, okay, uh, I guess because I noticed that she was sitting in the middle of the sidewalk and looking down and I couldn't, it was dark, so I couldn't tell exactly what the expression on her face was, but I noticed sort of the, the way her, the way she was holding her body seemed uh, not energetic. So I just wanted to double check and make sure that she was okay. And that's what I told her. I said, you know, this is this is what I thought. And she said, oh, that's interesting. And I said, why? And she said, because I don't think most people would notice. And we parted ways. But I've been thinking about that notion ever since because that, that uh, outward show of what you look like has lots of repercussions, right? So if you appear to be uh, energetic and joyful and up, if you will, then people aren't going to think that you need any help, right? That you are, that they're going to think that you're fine. If you appear low energy, if you're looking down, things like that, then people probably are going to think that you uh, need help. However, her point was, why did I notice? That was the question that she asked me. And I thought, okay, that that means that uh, I must be doing something where I'm observing my environment, right? Because that's the first thing to, the first point in the sort of caring, I don't even know what the word is, uh, progression, maybe? The first point in the caring progression must be that um, that you, that you are observant, right? That you are aware of your surroundings and that you observe what's going on. And if you observe someone, a being of any sort in need, then you have to make decisions about whether or not you're going to help, right? But first you have to work with, with that power of observation, sort of taking in what's inside you and going, is this, something that I need to be aware of, right? And how do you do that? How do you build your powers of observation? What do you need to do in order to be someone who observes the world around them? Well, that always takes me back to, to mindfulness, right? It always takes me back to you become more aware when you are more present and you are more present when you are more mindful. Mindfulness and being present are married as far as I'm concerned. They go together. So listen to some of those Friday episodes if you're interested in building up some of those skills. But also, I'm going to challenge you a little bit to start thinking about what you observe as you're walking down the street. And it doesn't even have to be if you're not outside. You can you can look around the room you're in right now and ask yourself what you see. Do you see art up on the walls? What kind of art is it? Are they paintings? Are, are there photographs? What's the furniture? What does it look like? Is there a dresser? Is one of the drawers slightly ajar? Uh, do you see a sofa? What color is the sofa? What does the sofa feel like, for example? Is, do the cushions have a texture? These are all ways that we can build those those skills, those observation skills, right? Sherlock Holmes in, in, the, in the TV series talks about having that mind palace, right? He's got that mind palace that, that he keeps everything in and is able to extract it whenever he needs it. Well, we can do our own version of that, but first and foremost, we need to sharpen our abilities to observe. Before we can, before we can classify and organize and categorize anything, we need to have seen it or heard it or felt it or tasted it or touched it so or smelled it. So that's my uh, 
that's my mission to you, <laughs> is for the next couple of days, see if you can start acknowledging to yourself what it is you're seeing. Because I think that is the first step, sort of building up that skill of what am I seeing? What am I observing? Because if you want to live a more ethical, more compassionate, more innovative life, first you need to see what's going on and then see if those things are problems and then see how your creative genius can fix those problems. Because remember, as I've been saying, and I'm going to keep saying it, ethical innovation is all about solving problems creatively while you're trying to do the right thing, right? That's that's the whole point of it all. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing is because I want us to innovate. And I think every one of us can, but I want us to innovate from that ethical values-based perspective. And the values are about what is right. What is the right thing? How do we minimize suffering of all the beings on the on, in the world, on the planet? And what can we do? Well, it starts with observation. It starts with building that awareness of what's going on around you. And you can start simply. If you're drinking a cup of coffee, notice the color. Categorize it for yourself. Is it creamy? Is it more dark brown? What does it look like? Or if you are drinking a tequila sunrise, maybe you are, while you're listening to this, notice that that sort of melon-colored uh, almost red of the grenadine and the orange of the orange juice, right? Before you stir it all up into that weird color that it becomes when you stir the two up. But that's these are all things we can be thinking about. How do we, as beings, become more compassionate? Well, we have to, as I said, build awareness. You build awareness by starting to observe. So as part of the mindfulness practice that I talk about on Fridays, you can really uh, deepen that that process for yourself. But as part of compassion, becoming aware of what's going on around you, seeing the beings, seeing the plants, seeing the furniture, seeing the traffic, seeing the sky, whatever it is that you're seeing, and acknowledging that you're seeing it builds that awareness, builds that mindfulness, but inherently also builds that compassion. So if you see something really cool over the next few days, drop me a line. I would love to hear about what it is you've seen. Because as I said, seeing it first starts building that awareness, those observation skills, and then you'll get to do other things and other ways and build the mindfulness that you need to build. All righty. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. My name is, again, Isolde Trachtenberg for the Innovative Mindset Podcast, reminding you that ethical innovation is all about solving problems creatively because you're trying to do the right thing. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. <music>Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2021. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you.